Hello friends, today in this video we are going to learn hyperemia and congestion. Hyperemia and congestion are the words related to the tissue with increased blood volume. But the mechanism and the resulting consequences are very different in both of them. So let's look. Hyperemia is an active process which occurs due to arteriolar dilatation which can occur in skeletal muscles during exercise or due to inflammation. Now due to arteriolar dilatation the tissue is getting extra excess amount of oxygenated blood. Hence the tissue becomes red in appearance which is known as erythema. Whereas congestion is a passive process which occurs due to reduced venous outflow which can be localized or generalized. Example of localized reduced venous outflow is obstruction of a particular vein due to certain external mass and pressure whereas generalized occurs when there is a cardiac failure. Then the venous outflow will be reduced everywhere. Now due to venous obstruction now there is accumulation of deoxygenated blood in the tissue. Hence, the appearance becomes bluish which is known as cyanosis. Now, when this congestion becomes chronic, in this condition there can be ischemic tissue injury because the blood tissue is devoid of oxygen. Hence, there can be ischemic injury and further it can give scarring of the tissue. If it persists still further, then our capillary may get rupture. Hence, there can be hemorrhagic foci and the, our RBC will get extravasated. Now, there can be further catabolism of this red blood cells. Hence, there can be accumulation of hemocytorin laden macrophage, which are also known as heart failure cells. This usually occurs within the lungs, but by the name heart failure cells, many times we get confused and say it might be occurring within the heart but it occurs in chronic pulmonary congestion. Now let's look at acute pulmonary congestion. Now there is pulmonary congestion which is just sudden. So due to venous obstruction the we, we can see engorged alveolar capillaries. Now due to high hydrostatic pressure what will happen there will be edema that is blood will move out of the vessels and we can observe alveolar septal edema. Slowly the capillaries will break down and hence there will be intraalveolar hemorrhage. Now what will happen when pulmonary congestion lasts for a long period that is it becomes chronic. Now there will be inflammation hence our alveolar septa will become thickened and fibrotic. And due to extravasated RBC it will get phagocytosed and there will be catabolism of RBC which will lead to formation of hemosiderin laden macrophage which are also known as heart failure cells. Now let's observe what will happen in hepatic congestion. When hepatic congestion is acute, let we first we will understand the microscopic structure of liver lobule. Now there is a central vein at the central position and in periphery we can observe portal triad which includes portal vein, hepatic arteriole and bile canaliculi. Now when there is venous congestion our central vein will be engorged hence our central area that is centrilobular area is more affected because there are extremely devoid of oxygenated blood and they are surrounded by deoxygenated blood whereas perilobular area contains hepatic arteriole so they may get some what nutrition so we can observe the necrosis in centrilobular area now what will happen if this hepatic congestion becomes chronic Due to the cell death in the centrilobular area and hemorrhage, there will be reddish brown appearance and it will become depressed. Now it will become more prominent 
surrounding the liver which is uncongested that is perilobular area is less congested hence it will be having 10 liver like appearance so we will see dark dark like dark like appearance which is known as nutmeg liver nutmeg is also known as chaifal in hindi i am having nutmeg and i like i will like to show you the appearance see can you observe this light dark light dark area in this nutmeg same appearance will be there in the liver slide the dark part will be of central lobular area which will be because of deposition of hemolyzed rbc and uh, necrosis cells whereas periphery cell will be uncongested so there will be light part so this was all about hyperemia and congestion friends if you like the video please share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel thank you